Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. A very warm welcome to all of my new subscribers. It really means a lot to me that you have watched my videos and on the back of that have decided to subscribe and be part of my very small but growing family here on YouTube. I don't take it for granted, so thank you very much. So in today's video, I thought to discuss an all too familiar feeling that oftentimes cripples us as professionals. Now, if I was to take a digital poll and I asked you how many of you have been called imposters, my guess is that not too many people will say yes, they have been called imposters. But if I was to ask you how many of us have felt like imposters, raise your hands. <laughs> I would venture to think that that is quite a lot of us. So in this video, I wanted to talk through what is called the imposter syndrome, understand why it is that we often feel like imposters in certain scenarios, how we can potentially address and overcome this feeling so we can move forward with our lives in a very productive and progressive and positive manner. So I thought to kick off this video by giving you a definition of what the imposter syndrome is. And I will read from a Harvard Business Review, which was published in 2021, and it reads, Imposter syndrome is loosely defined as doubting your abilities and feeling like a fraud. It disproportionately affects high achieving people who find it difficult to accept their accomplishments many question whether they are deserving of accolades. Another definition says, characters of imposter syndrome, an inability to realistically assess your competence and skills, attributing your success to external factors, berating your performance, and it's essentially the fear that you won't live up to expectations. So you are essentially discounting yourself, your skills, and your competency or capabilities. Now, although the Harvard Business Review attributes the imposter syndrome to high achievers, which I do indeed believe is true, I also believe that it cuts across a spectrum of personality types, of dispositions, of belief systems, of age, gender, demographics, basically. And many people across the board, at some point in their lives, they will feel like imposters. But I also believe that some personality types are more susceptible to suffering from the imposter syndrome than other personality types. Additionally, data backs up the theory that women tend to suffer from this more than men. Now that is an entirely different video where we delve into why it is such a corporate norm in the society that women tend to suffer from the imposter syndrome more than men, but we'll leave that to another video. So if according to the Harvard Business Review, achievers, high achievers tend to suffer from this more than others, it begs the question as to why. To me, this seems like such an oxymoron because if you are a high achiever, that means that you have a panoply, a sort of, you know, Rolodex, if you will, or historical trail of performance, of high quality performance. So why would you feel like an imposter in certain scenarios? This condition tends to rear its ugly head when we are faced with incredible opportunities to progress in our careers, to do some amazing things in terms of, you know, projects and goals and achievements, essentially to move to the next level or the next stage or the next phase in life. And this condition can be so destructive to one's self-esteem. Now I'd like to take a step back to really think about why one would feel like an imposter. Why would you feel like a fraud in a certain scenario? Again, more likely an opportunistic scenario. And this is something that I have often wondered about in the past where I felt inadequate. Now, I think that the source of this syndrome or this condition boils down to one thing, fear. Fear of uncertainty. How will I perform in this new position? Or maybe fear of failure. I don't want to fail. I want everything to be perfect. Or maybe even fear of not being able to repeat your past performance or your past successes. But I think that the common thread in all of this is fear. Whenever you feel like an imposter in a given situation, whether that is in a corporate setting, uh, or perhaps you are meeting your significant other's family for the first time and you feel like you don't fit into their world, or perhaps you are moving to a new neighborhood and you feel like I don't belong here, whatever it might be, I want you to remember something which we often forget. 
especially when it comes to the corporate or workplace. There is a reason that you have been selected or shortlisted out of the tens, hundreds, thousands of people within your organization to perhaps spearhead that project, or you have been given the lead facilitator role to present to that incredible global external stakeholder that you are trying to acquire or whose account you're trying to onboard. And in most situations, it's not because your bosses quote unquote like you. Beyond that, there must be a reason they've chosen you. And it boils down to the fact that they believe in your ability to deliver. They believe in your past achievements and they believe that that is a good indication of what you can do, your capabilities. So what other people see in us, sometimes it's often difficult for us to see in ourselves. And this is precisely the point at which fear creeps in and tries to cripple us. There are many times in the past I felt like an imposter, notwithstanding all of my achievements. A recent example is my new brand, my new home fragrance brand, Coco and Crumble, go and check it out. I'm an investment banker, but I have a deep passion for home fragrance, home decor, and just everything to do with the home. And I felt like I wasn't an expert. I don't have decades of experience within this industry. And even with the passion I had and the sheer willpower I had, to create an amazing brand for my consumers. I still felt like this is not my industry or perhaps, you know, people would think, well, X, Y, Z brand has been doing it for donkey years and you've come into this industry as an infant or a nascent brand. You know, why should we choose your brand over one that has been established for a very long time? But at some point I had to remind myself that every single one of those brands, brands that churn out millions of dollars in revenues every year from this particular sector and have been around for a hundred years or more has been where I was when I started. And they too must have felt like, you know, this is all new. So it's okay to feel that way. It's only natural, it's only normal. If something is placed in front of you and it's new to you, there will be that sort of agitation within yourself that I don't know if I'm quite prepared for this. I don't know if I'm quite skilled for this, but over time you find that you'll get better. And you know, before I launched Coco and Crumble, the most amazing thing happened. A friend of mine had gifted their friend one of my candles and that individual placed a huge corporate order. So before I even launched my business, my first client was a corporate client. And that really kick-started everything for me. And suddenly all of those feelings about not having spent decades in this industry, it just didn't matter anymore. All of that just faded away completely. And oftentimes we prefer to stay in situ because of that fear of moving forward. The irony is that when you move forward and you've conquered that fear, you often say to yourself, well, what was I so afraid of? It's not actually that bad. And oftentimes we find that the imposter syndrome is actually self-inflicted. Yes, there might be some externalities that have added to that pressure, but you also have to remember that, like I said in the beginning, if you've been chosen for a specific task, those who have chosen you have faith in you. And so if you are feeling quite fearful of taking the next step or feeling inadequate, that is a self-inflicted fear. And it's something that we really have to address in order for us to move forward. I work in the investment banking industry and oftentimes I have felt like such a huge imposter forgetting all of my achievements. An example is I got a first class in my economics degree. I was offered an internship by Goldman Sachs in my penultimate year. And in fact, on the back of that, I got a full-time position offer before I even completed my degree. Whilst in my final year, others were sort of, you know, worried about applying for positions, interviewing and things like that. I already had my first job in the bag. I have been privileged to enjoy some of the most incredible positions within certain organizations. I completed my MBA at Oxford University. I also completed a course at Cambridge um, over the summer where I finished my MBA. I have obtained my CFA charter, the Chartered Financial Analyst um, Charter, and I've done amazing things. You know, my current position at work is you know, not too shabby, um, but beyond all of that, every now and then I do feel like I just need to push the boundaries a little bit more. I still need to do more to prove 
that I'm worthy of opportunities that have been given to me or that I've come into. And that is completely mind boggling and ludicrous to think about, especially when I consider that I didn't always necessarily go aggressively after these opportunities. Sometimes I came across them because I was the right fit for the job and because I have a track record with my employers of delivering on my responsibilities. So why shouldn't I be chosen for the next opportunity that comes around? But I bet that you often forget how incredible you are and all the things you've achieved and your journey to get to where you are today. And I think this is a fantastic segue into discussing how to approach the imposter syndrome if that's something that you are struggling with now so you can overcome it and move forward. I think the first important point is to acknowledge it. Acknowledge that this is something that you are potentially currently struggling with and it's something that you need to get over in order for you to enjoy more opportunities in the future, in order for you to progress in your perhaps current role or in your current organization, in your relationship, whatever it might be. I didn't have the privilege of understanding what the imposter syndrome was growing up. As I progressed in my career, as I became older and wiser, I came into knowledge of the fact that those feelings, those very awkward feelings I had growing up, um, they actually had a name. And once I was able to put a label on what it was, I could then face it head on. I often say that it's very helpful to name your fear in order to conquer it. The second point I would highlight is the need to practice, practice when you're done and do some more practicing. Preparation is absolutely vital and is such a huge part of success and it also ties into overcoming the imposter syndrome. So a recent relevant example for me is starting my home fragrance brand. I essentially spent a whole year doing a lot of research, speaking to a lot of stakeholders in the sector, speaking to experts, trying to understand what industry I was going into, especially being an outsider, so to speak. I spent a lot of time doing my own due diligence, understanding the products, understanding the process, because I was very keen on bringing the best brand to market that I possibly could. So over the course of the year, I conducted over 250 tests on my candles alone. I spent months perfecting the diffusers. I spent months as well learning about the wax melts, learning about fragrance oils, uh, essential oils, all the terminology, all the technical bits of creating these brands. I had to understand that. And what I noticed was that after some time, I became very proficient at creating these products. I could tell where there was a defect or I could tell where something was missing. I could also tell a lot about a wick's performance just by looking at it. I could tell whether a wood wick would be too small or too big for a particular jar size. All of these things came from practice. Practice and more practice to ensure that I got better at my craft. Now, practice is quite subjective because if you are getting promoted, for example, where well, you can't practice the role just yet, maybe because you know you're not, uh, you don't have increased or great visibility as to what will be required of you in your new position, perhaps. But what I would say in that stead is to speak to those who've been there before, speak to a mentor, get a mentor, speak to those around you who have perhaps been in the same position or could potentially provide, you know, really incredible and insightful input into your success within the role. There are so many resources out there, but you must do your homework. The next point is to separate feelings from fact. I'm afraid is different from I'm not good at my job. I'm afraid to take on this or embark upon this journey is different from I don't have the skill set or competence to deliver and be successful. Those are two completely different things and you must be able to distinguish between the two. So I will stick with the professional or work environment uh, example. So an example of the first scenario is I've been given the opportunity to become a senior director in, I don't know, an investment company. And I'm afraid because number one, it's a new company. Even though I'm a director currently in my current position, I've been given this opportunity, okay? I'm not familiar with the company because I haven't worked there. Um, so I'm 
a little bit concerned about what I might face internally, but I do have the skill sets to be successful at the role versus I have been presented with the opportunity to become a director in an agri tech sustainable portfolio business in Cambodia. However, that isn't my area of expertise. There's a difference between those two. For one of them, you have the skill sets. For the other, you may not have the right qualifications to embark upon that role. So you should be able to distinguish between the two of them. One of them is a feeling of, you know, a natural feeling of discomfort or fear. The other one is, is a fact. You don't have the skill set for that. And I honestly feel that this will help you conquer the fear so you know that it's just fear. I can do this, but I just need to address this fear and move forward. And also it helps you be more realistic. I don't have the skill set for this opportunity, so maybe this just isn't the right one for me at this moment in time. The fourth point, which really cuts across every sphere in life, is get comfortable with making mistakes. One thing I have learned in my, I'd like to say my short time on earth, but not quite. One thing I've learned over time is that my perfectionism or strive for perfectionism has often held me back and it's often caused fear. If I can't be perfect in certain scenarios, if I cannot produce perfect results, that rigidity has often worked against me. Mark Zuckerberg was asked a question as to um, what mistakes he would avoid if he was to, you know, do over Facebook or now Meta. And you know what he said? His advice was to not try to avoid mistakes. You could try as much as you can, but it's life. Failure is as much a part of an important part of life as success. So don't try to stop yourself from making mistakes, especially ones that you can't control because you will see and you will be up against many more mistakes in the future. That's how we learn, that's how we grow. Similar to toddlers when they are learning to walk, they will stumble oftentimes, but you know, they pick themselves up and they keep going, they keep practicing, and one day they are running so fast, it's impossible to stop them. Once you embrace mistakes and you start to see mistakes as learning opportunities, it really changes everything. And then you're not so scared of making another mistake because, well, firstly, you're human. And secondly, you understand and you appreciate that making mistakes is all part of the learning curve in order to get significantly better or to become an expert at what you do. And the final thing that really helped me overcome the imposter syndrome is to be kind, to be kind to myself. It's interesting because those around me often remind me that a lot of the pressures, the stress I feel is often self-inflicted. People don't expect you to be perfect. And for some reason in our minds, we think that the expectation or the perception that others have of us is to be perfect make mistakes every now and then allow yourself take a break allow yourself do silly things it's all part of life and these are nuggets that you will be able to pass on to the next generation when the time comes so be kind to yourself and when you fall pick yourself up encourage yourself self-soothe and say you know what it's fine this is part of a learning curve this is part of my journey and it's part of my story those who did incredible things in life did not always get it right the first time. And it was from sheer tenacity and their ability to rise above errors or rise above fears or rise above failure that they became successes. I want that for myself and I definitely want that for you as well. So if after all of this, you still feel afraid, you still feel inadequate, well, I'll say to you, feel the fear and do it anyway. What's the worst that can happen? Look after yourselves. Bye for now.